What's up YouTube, I'm Mike. <laughs> you know it's about to be a banger when I start laughing before I, even, before I even tell you what I'm talking about. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different on this channel. Uh, I'm going to be taking a psychopathy test. Live, well, it's not really live, but I'm going to record myself taking this thing called uh, the Levinson Self-Report Psychopathy Scale, uh, which is a test of sociopathy, apparently. Um, uh, I want to be transparent. Uh, I was asked to take this test at some point in the distant past before I knew uh, what it was. I, I, I have taken this before when I didn't, you know, when I had not been primed in any way. Um, and the result that I got then is going to be almost exactly as the result I got I, I get today. Uh, possibly the result I, I get today will be worse um, because time has not been good to me psychologically. So uh, the, the real reason for this is, is not just to get an answer about whether or not, uh, based on this test, I am a sociopath, but to and just in case you've ever taken this test, or if, if you're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna read the questions and then I'm going to answer them and then I'm gonna explain my answers. So maybe this will at least be insightful to people who, who apparently are not psychopaths. So if, if you would answer one of these questions differently than I do, at least maybe this will be entertaining because I'm going to explain to you why I feel the way that I do and then you can compare, you know, we can compare that to, I don't know, apparently normal people. So uh, this was developed in 1995. Uh, probably took it around 98-ish. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. Um, here we go. So this test is a series of 26 questions, and you you basically in each question you have to either disagree, somewhat disagree. Uh, you could be neutral, mainly agree or agree. Okay, so that's the scale. Uh, this is gonna be this is gonna be pretty straightforward. So here we go. Question number one, success is based on survival of the fittest. I am not concerned about the losers. Agree. Yes, I agree. I 100% agree with that statement. I can't even fathom the alternative. I, I cannot even imagine how it's possible for there to be a person who would disagree with this statement. Like, if you're in the audience, please, in the comments section, walk me through how this works. Survival is based on the fittest. I am not concerned about the losers. This is pretty much across the board. If I win at anything, I absolutely give zero fucks about the losers at all. They're losers. Winners don't care about losers. And I pretty much classify my world and basically... Uh, to some degree, every interaction that I have in sort of a win versus lo lose scenario. So, like, for example, when I rip, um, uh, what is it, the carnivore guy, uh, not the most recent one, carnivore muscle, I think, I don't know. If I get into a debate, and obviously it's subjective, right? Uh, I feel like I win the debate. If, if my data is better than your data, then you're a loser and I don't care about you at all. I you, you effectively cease to become, well, I shouldn't say cease to become a human being because I, I don't really, I don't really see the humanity in other people to begin with, which is, you know, part and parcel of the problem. But, you know, I don't want to beat all of these to death. It'll take forever. I am absolutely 100% not concerned at all uh, about the, the effects that losing has on anyone else. Number two, I find myself in the same kinds of trouble time after time. Uh, I mean, I definitely somewhat agree. I would probably have to say agree because generally speaking, what I get in trouble with is, is um, that I don't, I feel like the rules don't apply to me. That, that's sort of like the, the overarching theme is that I, I get speeding tickets, uh, then I beat them. Uh, I get in trouble at work. Like the, the vast majority of the time that I'm in trouble, um, it's because I have basically disregarded a rule because I didn't feel like it applied to me. And there's usually a trend to, to these things that I get caught up on. Uh, I don't think the rules apply to me. I, I think the rules only apply to people who allow the rules to apply to them. I, to, as far as I'm concerned, the sole purpose of creating rules is to control weak people. So it, I love rules because the vast majority of people adhere to them.
And so when I don't adhere to them, that gives me a distinct advantage over everyone who's playing by the rules. So like I would have absolutely zero back to the survival of the fittest thing. If I won a body, if I went out and won like let's say a natty bodybuilding show because I cheated and used steroids, I would have zero guilt about this at all uh, because the rules don't apply to me. Like, it, who gives you, if, if I can figure out a way to beat the rules and win, to me, that's the height of human achievement. Anybody can follow the rules. It's the truly exceptional among us who find ways to break the rules and get away with it. See, that's the key. You have to break the rules and then get away with it. I don't, I don't devalue rule breakers. I value them. They are the special people in the world. Anyone who just drives the limit, toes the line, does everything they're supposed to do, that person is, by my definition, a total loser. One of the biggest losers on earth, the biggest waste of an existence is to just blindly follow rules. Number three, for me, what is, what's right is whatever I can get away with. Yes, exactly. That's exactly it. There are no right and wrong. Right is whatever I can get away with. So if I could get away with taking somebody out of here, I would feel absolutely zero guilt about it. Well, Mike, but what about their kids and their family? They're probably all losers too. I don't care about them at all. Anything I can get away with it, I consider right. I made it right because I got away with it. The problem with right and wrong is that you have to have some kind of, of higher authority that determines this. And see, lucky for me, I don't believe in God. So I don't have any, any God-mandated moral compass. I do not respect any member of, of authority at all outside of what they can do to me. So like, I don't break certain laws because I'm afraid I might get caught. If I knew of a foolproof way to break, in, like speeding, I speed all over the world because I have a foolproof way of beating a speeding ticket. So I speed with impunity because the last three or four times I've gotten speeding tickets, I've beat them in court. They are almost always illegal. So I don't, I don't even attempt to follow speed limit laws because they're almost always illegal. So. Anything I can get away with, by definition, is the right thing to do because I have no moral compass. So, full agree on that one. I am often bored. I don't know about this. The thing is that I really don't have any trouble finding things to do. So, if I, if I notice myself getting bored, then I'll just do something else that's, that's entertaining to me. I, I, spend very, I honestly spend very little time in boredom. Because there's so many things to do in life, you just find something to do. So I'm going to actually fully disagree with that one. In today's world, I feel justified in doing anything I can get away with to succeed. Yes, yes, anything. I don't care what it is. My wife and I were talking about this earlier. And, uh, well, that's kind of a different comment. I, I will do anything I can to succeed. If, if I was, if, if me and my neighbor both worked at the same company and we were trying to apply for the same job and, the, you know, the first person to get to work got the first interview and it was a well-known fact that the person who interviewed first had a disproportionately high likelihood of getting the job, I would have no problem letting all of the air out of his tires to make sure I got to work first, to make sure I could win the promotion. I do not care what I have to do to win. I will win at all costs. It, it, I, I absolutely don't care. I don't, I can't, I would love for someone in the audience, absent some authority from on high, okay, no appeals to God because that doesn't work for me. I don't believe in God. Why should I care about anyone else? To me, that's the better question. Why should I care about what anyone else is going through? They're not me. Everybody's got problems. I don't expect anybody to give a shit about my problems. It blows me away that I still have an audience to listen to anything that I say. I don't know why any of you people care about anything that I say. I do appreciate that apparently I'm entertaining. I, there's a lot of people, I, you know, there's a lot... I love stand-up comedy. Some people are always recommending that I do stand-up comedy. Dude, I've thought about that so many times in my life. I have watched every major stand-up comedy video, you know, show ever. Like every Carlin, every Kennison, every Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, DL Hughley. I, I fucking all of them. I watch all of them. I love stand-up comedy. And um 
What's that have to do with this test? Uh, yeah, I, I will absolutely do anything I can to succeed. At, at, I don't care who it hurts. Uh, next on the list, I find that I am able to pursue one goal for a long time. It really depends on the goal. Like, I definitely have massive ADHD. And so, I, I can get bored quickly, and the second that I get bored, then I just, like I said before, I don't like to be bored, so then I will just pivot to something else. So, like, I have a really bad problem, drives my wife mental, with, like, I start books and don't finish them. You know, like, nine times out of ten, I'm, like, quarter, halfway through a book, and I'm already so bored with this. I'm just like, dude, dude's rambling too long. I'm moving on. Uh, it, it takes a lot to keep me engaged. So, but I do, I do have a lot of long-term goals. Like bodybuilding, obviously, is a long-term goal. You know, a lot of the things that I care the most about in life, uh, you can only succeed at if you are able to pursue it for a long time. So I'm going to go mostly agree on that. My main purpose in life is getting as many goodies as I can. Uh, I definitely don't think life is all about possessions. But they're way up there. And I consider people to be goodies. So, you know, I definitely want the right people in my life. I, I mean, clearly I like toys. I've got four, I've got four monitors. It's, it's behind what you can see are four monitors connected to three different computers. Just sitting right here in this space. I have three computers uh, and attached to four monitors. And there's like, I got, I've got BMW. Yes, I, I, I do think that. I want to get as many goodies as I can in life. I don't plan anything very far in advance. Agree, agree. I I hate this. I don't want to plan. My wife is constant. My wife, I, I will drive her mental because she will constantly tell me about things that are happening not now. I don't give a fuck about something that's not happening not now. If it's happening in four days, then tell me in three and a half. Okay, I don't give it. The second she says, like, next week, tuned out. I, I completely fucking tuned out. She could tell me next week I'm, I'm thinking about sleeping with your dad. I would be like, oh, okay, that sounds cool. I No, I absolutely cannot pay attention to next week. Absolutely not. I, what I need her, Sarah, if you're listening, from now on what I need you to do, instead of telling me some shit next week, do what they do at work and put it on the calendar. You send me a little calendar invite. Hey, Mike, you've been invited to go have dinner at your parents. Something you can't stand doing because it's miserably boring. But I like to socialize, so I would like for you to go with us. And then I can even respond. You know, yes, no, or maybe. I think it's a great idea. Then you won't be mad at me that, oh, well, you didn't tell yeah, me. Yeah, then you're covered. You a week ago. Yeah, you're covered. So just send the calendar invite. And I look at it every day on my phone. And then it, see, see what? Psychopathy test saving the marriage in real time. Calendar invite. Done. Done. Boom! See that? Because I can't, dude, I can't make, I cannot retain it. It really doesn't matter what the thing is. She could tell me, hey, Mike, guess what? I just turned 44, by the way. That's why there's happy birthday back here. And this what that's all my daughter did all this decoration. Uh, September the 18th was my 44th birthday. My wife could have said to me on September the 1st, hey Mike. In 18 days, and then I would have tuned out, and she could have said, I'm going to hire 10 strippers, and uh, a, a, and there's going to be like a, a, a drum full of crystal. I mean, she could have promised me anything in the world that would like remotely pique my excitement. I would, I would have no idea what it was, because the second she said, 18 days down the road, done. Can't care less. Um, making a lot of money is my most important goal. Uh, it's definitely not. That's the thing. Like, uh, and I, I don't know. If, I don't know how much how tainted this answer is going to be, because, um, like, if I had a choice, honestly, between being having Elon Musk's money and having a pardon by every, like, at least the American government. To, the, to where I could not be prosecuted for any crime up to and including uh, offing someone, I would definitely take that blanket pardon to just go run around creating mass hysteria and panic than to have, you know, all of the money in the world. Money does not get it for me. Money does not satisfy 
uh, my dopamine fix. It can, because buying $1,300 shoes from Christian Louboutin actually feels really good. Driving a nice car that costs a lot of money feels good. But the thing is, I don't want the money, I want the things. When there was a period of time where I had a very large amount of money in the bank account. That, that money in that bank account gave me almost no satisfaction other than the promise that if it stayed there, one day I was going to get to spend it and enjoy it. The presence of money does absolutely nothing for me. So I'm going to have to honestly disagree with this one. I quickly lose interest in tasks I start. That definitely used to be something that was a major problem for me. I'm going to have a hard time answering this question honestly because the ADHD is a real bitch. So I don't know whether it's that I lose interest in the task or that I have a hard time staying focused. Like I, I can't tell you the number of times like I'll be like, oh, I need to go mow the yard. And I'll go open the garage and I'll see something. And the next thing, oh my God, I was supposed to go get seed tonight. See? See that? See what just happened? I was trying to tell you, I'm, I'm, here I am trying to answer this question, and then I'm giving you an analogy, and then my ADHD brain remembered that I was supposed to go buy ryegrass seed because I'm planning on overseeding my Bermuda with ryegrass that will have beautiful green grass in our front yard this, this winter, which I really enjoy being outside in the winter. And so see, then I get caught up in some shit. So I'll go out to mow the yard, then, then forget that I needed to fertilize first, then I'll be fertilizing, and I'll notice there's a, a picket missing from the fence, then I'll go get a hammer to fix that and then I'll never get back to where I started. So it's like, I, I don't know that I lose interest so much as that I can't keep focus on it. Um, you know, I play video games until they're done. I, I'm just going to be, um, I'm going to be neutral on that one. I hate being neutral, but I'm going to be neutral on that one. See, I want to be black or white. It's either full go, full stop. If you notice, there's only been one question that I somewhat agreed with. I don't really understand someone to agree with. In my world, the light switch is either on or off. Don't tell me it's dim. I don't need a dimmer. I want it on or off. That's not true. I, I do like dimmable lights. I mean, it's a bad analogy when I really think about it. I'm going to have to put some more thought into that one. Um... I let others worry about higher values. My, con my main concern is the bottom line. I'm going to have to wholeheartedly agree with it with at least half of this statement. My main concern is the bottom line. I don't even give a shit if anybody else actually worries about the other values. But if, if, if higher values need to be worried about, then I will definitely leave that to somebody else because there's a 0% zero, zero chance I'm going to make the, the right decision there because I don't have any values. Um, my, mo most of my problems are due to the fact that other people just don't understand me. Yes! Yes! This test is genius! How, how could this test be written to absolutely define my entire existence on this planet? The overwhelming majority of my problems that I have is because somebody else cannot get on my level. The number of things that I could solve at work tomorrow, I mean tomorrow, in one day, the efficiency in my company would, would increase tenfold if they would just listen to what I'm trying to tell them. But they won't listen. They don't understand the angle that I'm coming from. I watched this amazing interview that Elon Musk gave, I don't know when it was given, and this guy was asking him about how he chooses what product projects to work on. Does he like look at a bunch of data and stuff? And Elon Musk gives the greatest answer in the world. He's like, no, dude, I don't. Like, we don't do customer surveys. I don't, I don't leave it up to customers to decide whether they want my product because they can't envision the product. And he cited a couple of famous surveys where like they surveyed a whole bunch of people and they said, they explained to them what a television was and they said, would you buy one? 90% of people said no. No, because they couldn't, they couldn't really imagine what the inventor had in mind. And so Elon Musk is smart enough to realize that he's smarter than everybody else on earth. So there's no point in getting the, getting the opinions of a bunch of lemmings when he can just produce a product and then convince them to buy it and then they'll just nod their heads and buy it. If he listened to what they want, he, there would be no advances. You know, nobody knew they needed a smartphone until they had it. And so this is the problem that I exist in is that uh, I have a vision for basically everything in my life. And if other people could just see through my eyes, then we could just solve one problem after another after another. We, there, we, there would be no problems. Um, people who are stupid enough to get ripped off usually deserve it. 
Well, I agree, but I would like to change the statement to say people who are stupid enough to get ripped off always deserve it. They always deserve it. If you are dumb enough to get hustled, then you deserve to get hustled. That's the way that works. And then hopefully after getting hustled a couple of times, you will learn your lesson not to trust people and then you won't get hustled anymore. But if you don't learn the lesson, then you are prey. Your sole reason for existing on this planet is to be taken advantage of and it does not make me a bad person for facilitating that for you. The lion is not bad and the gazelle good. Okay, Gazelles ravage uh, landscape. They will eat grass into oblivion and the lion eats it and there's no value system here. Okay, so it's not my fault that you're prey and that I'm a predator and if you're too stupid to, con to continue to get preyed upon, you will. I will prey on you every chance I get because that's in my nature. Before I do anything, I carefully consider the possible consequences. I do carefully consider the possible consequences and sometimes that leads me to not act on a thing. But not all, but, but rarely. There's rarely, there's very, I, I, before I do anything, I carefully consider the possible consequences. I gotta somewhat agree on that, I guess. I can't disagree because I do consider them. I don't, it doesn't say do you follow them. I definitely consider them. Uh, looking out for myself is my top priority. I mean, it is. I, I, I would definitely, like last night, we were walk, me, my, my wife and my daughter and I were walking, and there was a couple, there was a dog barking in this fence, and it, it was jumping, and, and I envisioned this dog being able to get through this fence. And like I was already in my mind planning on how to get in between myself and my daughter and my wife so that I could rip this dog's eyeballs out of its skull before it could actually endanger members of my family. So aside from like my daughter, my wife, my son, then yes, my absolute top, top priority is myself, um, which I think is what's being asked here. I'm just gonna agree with that. I have been, I have been in a lot, <laughs> you guys will love this one. <laughs> I have been in a lot of shouting matches with other people. Yeah. All fucking day, every day. I tell other people what they want to hear so that they will do what I want them to do. Uh, this is mostly true. I have no problem being brutally honest with people. But in a lot of situations outside the confines of my marriage, I am brutally honest with my wife. My wife dyed her hair recently and I have told her no fewer than 10 times how much I hate it. I am not going to protect her ego in this at all. Because if I lie to her and tell her that I like it, then she's either A, going to continue to keep it in this god-awful color it is, or she's more likely to do it again and God knows what that color might be. So it, it behooves me to be brutally honest with her even if, that, even if that upsets her. Because see, her feelings are not top priority. I, no one's feelings are top. Feelings are irrelevant. I do not put a lot of stake in feelings at all unless they're mine, of course. And then, of course, I try to do whatever chemical things I can to modify them. But, um, so, but in, the, in the business world, outside of my home, I, I will absolutely tell people what they want to hear uh, so that they will do what I want them to do. So I have to agree with that. When I get frustrated, I often let off steam by blowing my top. <laughs> yes, 100%. I would be upset if my success came at someone else's expense. I mean, who honestly answers yet? This is the thing. The whole time I'm answering this quite these questions, I cannot imagine the conditions where a person uh, answers that they disagree to. Success is based on survival of the fittest. I'm not concerned about the losers. If you are concerned about other people losing, then you are a loser. I just can't understand that. Um, like. For me, what's right is whatever I can get away with. Like, I can't fathom that not being true. I can't fathom the person who's like, well, even if I could get away with, you know, not paying, I don't know, my taxes, it's, it's morally wrong, so I'll do it anyway. Fuck that. Uh, so like in this, I would be upset if my success came at someone else's expense. 100% disagree. In fact, I enjoy my success more when I know it costs somebody else. 
So like if I have a choice between selling 10 trucks to a company who is not, who, who, who like no one else is bidding on, like I'm the only person they're trying to do business with, if I get that deal, like yeah, it feels good because I made money and I, and I sold something. But I would much prefer to sell 10 trucks to a guy that's got two or three other people also bidding that contract. If it's just me and the customer, there's only one, there's two winners. I win, the customer wins. If it's me and two competitors and the customer, I win, the customer wins, and both of them lose. And if I could dance a jig in front of them and rub it into their faces, I absolutely would. I take an immense amount of pleasure in other people's failures. I want everyone around me to fail, more or less. Because the more people around me fail, the, the more vaulted I become. So, like, I would have a really hard time, like, being on the Olympia stage congratulating somebody else who just beat me in the Olympia. You know, like, when, when Hottie refused to shake, I think it was Dexter, uh, not Dexter, uh, Derek's hand, like, it was shitty. Don't get me wrong, it was shitty. But I get it. I get it. I totally get it. I totally get being a bad loser. I, I don't... Uh, I don't ugh. like I I absolutely not only have no problem with my with my success coming at somebody else's expense, but I absolutely it actually enhances my enjoyment of success. Love is overrated. Absolutely, absolutely. But I tell my wife on a regular basis the word love has no meaning. She told she was consistently telling her ex-husband that she loved him while she was engaged in what anybody would call at a bare minimum a bare minimum an emotional affair with me so why would i value her her claims of love it clearly doesn't mean anything it has no value i mean how many girls in my life have i said i love you to this word is so massively overrated in our society as to have effectively zero value. I tell my wife that all the time. Don't tell me. I don't, I don't care about you. She'll say, but I love you. I love you. I don't give a shit that you love me. All I care about is how you behave. That's what I care about. You can tell me that you hate me all day long and worship me like a king, and I will take that rather than you telling me how much you love me and then going and cheating on me with my best friend. Like, that's the insanity of it. And people think they can get away with just saying I love you and that fixes it. It fixes nothing. That word has no meaning or value. I often admire a really clever scam. I do admire it. I don't want, to be, I don't want it to be pulled on me, but I do admire it. I make a point of trying not to hurt others in pursuit of my goals. Absolutely not. I go out of my way to hurt as many people as I can in the pursuit of my goals. If I can cost the X company that I worked for if it, like I would love nothing more than to just make a living by stealing all of their customers. I want them to fail in a massive way. And every piece of business that I steal from them, I enjoy even more than if I took it from anyone else. I enjoy manipulating other people's feelings. Oh my God. There are a few, there are a few pleasures greater on earth than manipulating someone else absolutely selling someone into believing something, controlling their behavior, controlling the narrative, changing their point of view. It is one of the single greatest pleasures on earth. Uh, 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 Arnold Schwarzenegger famously said that getting a pump in the gym was better than coming. I think manipulating other people is better than both of those. I feel bad if my words or actions cause someone else to feel emotional pain. Absolutely not. I hope that they do. Sorry, I had to come back because my camera was going to... This 30 minute... I, I would make so much longer videos if I didn't have to deal with this 30 minute timeout. That is the single worst feature of this Canon R6. Because now I have to go through the process of cutting the two pieces together and rendering it. I just want to take the card out of the camera, plug it straight into my computer, upload it, and, and be done with it. And every time I go over 29 minutes, I have to do this whole extra process. Um, so like I've been kind of rushing through these because I was trying to get to the to the end point, but I'll circle back at the end. Um, so the last one was I feel bad if my words or actions cause someone else to feel emotional pain. Uh, no, I, I don't. I don't value anybody else's emotional pain. I don't value anybody else's emotions. Every every time somebody goes on telling me how they feel about something, basically the second a person says feel, I'm already done. 
I don't like statements that start with I feel. I, I like statements that start with I think. I think. I would rather you say, I think the reason I feel X, like I could get engaged in that. If you say to me, I think the reason I, I have no libido is because my estrogen is high, we can have a conversation. If you just go, I just feel like I don't have very good libido. I'm already tuned out. Don't start a sentence with I feel because I've, you've already lost me. I want to know what you think about the situation because if you are coming at the situation from a position of thought, then you have a chance of solving the problem. If you're just telling me how you feel, all you're doing is venting and you're wanting me to validate you and I don't do that. Me validating you is a waste of my goddamn time. I have better things in my life to do than to validate your feelings. So if all you want to do is talk about your feelings, go to the strip club. That is the best place in the world to talk about your feelings. I wish my wife would let me go to the strip club talk about my feelings. Because I can go sit down with a stripper, and she can sit right on my lap, I can tell her everything that I feel, she's required to sit there and listen to me, she's gonna tell me all the reasons I shouldn't feel that way, it doesn't matter whether she's right or wrong, it's going to make me feel better because she's going to buy uh, by virtue of what she's saying, she's going to validate everything that I feel and then I'm going to come home feeling better. And it didn't cost anybody anything. My, if I tell, I cannot sit if, I sit, if I sit with a stripper, and I've done this, I've done this on more than one occasion, I have literally gotten into massive fights with my wife, driven straight to a strip club, walk straight in the door, sit down, some stripper approaches me, I love doing this because they hate it, right? The stripper comes, she sees me walk in, she's like, oh yeah, I'm about to make some money. So she comes over, hey baby, how are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm sad. Oh really, why, what's going on? Fighting with my wife. Oh yeah, wives can be that way. And so she thinks right there, she's gonna pivot me. She's gonna go, hey, why don't you come have a dance? Hey, why don't you get a private room? Hey, let me grind on your lap. But before she puts her manipulation on me, I immediately go, yeah, this is what's going on. I get these women to sit down and I will talk to a stripper as long as I can keep her there. You know, I might like add in a couple of little hints that maybe I'm going to buy something or I'll, you know, I'll buy a drink to keep the conversation flowing. This is free therapy. A stripper is a better therapist than a licensed therapist. It's the same thing. She's doing the exact same thing that your therapist is going to do. Okay, She's going to validate your feelings. She's probably going to give me some advice. The advice is probably going to be just as shitty as some libtard therapist is going to give me. Except she's not going to have her titties in my face. So at least I can sit there with good scenery and listen to somebody whose opinions I don't value at all. That's not the point. I just want to be validated. That's the thing. When your wife tells you how she feels, she does not want your thoughts and opinions on the matter. She just wants you to validate her feelings. And so if I am just looking for validation, I don't need to get this from a rocket scientist. I don't need to go pay $150 an hour to somebody who has a PhD in whatever psychotherapy they specialize in for them to validate my feelings. I could go to a men's club and have some girl that barely has four brain cells rubbed together with some big beautiful eyes bat her eyes at me and go, yeah baby, I totally get it. It's okay. Things are going to be better. Want to look at my titties? Yes. Yes I do. And that will make me feel better. So there you go. If you haven't used that, that is highly, highly successful if your wife will allow it. Um, my wife has technically allowed it, like it hasn't ended our marriage, but I know that it hurts her feelings and I'm really trying hard in my life to, to at least care about my wife's feelings. Um, if for no other reason than when she feels good, I feel good. So see, even if you're a selfish, you know, uh, self-important sociopath, you can still figure out that caring about other people's feelings sometimes is valuable. This is why they've had to change the definition of psychopathy so many times. Used to back in the day, they said psychopaths were not capable of feeling other people's emotions. This is patently untrue. I am very, very capable of feeling someone's emotions and I am even capable of feigning um, uh, 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 sympathy or empathy. I don't really feel it, 
but I can make you feel it for the purposes of manipulating you. Then we get back to that manipulating thing. So I'm, I'm actually better than most people at sympathizing and validating so long as you have something I want. If you don't have something I want, you will get absolutely no sympathy, no empathy, no validation for me. But if you have something I want, you will think, you will think that I am the sweetest, kindest, gentlest, most tender-hearted person you have ever met because I am going to blow every color and density of smoke up your ass that I can get up there so that you are so intoxicated with the smell that you literally cannot see right from wrong anymore. And when I have you reeled all the way in and you're like a blank slate, then I'm going to tell you how to feel and you're going to adopt that feeling and it's going to become your own and the program has been successful. That's the way I operate. Man, I shouldn't be admitting to any of this shit. Um, even if I were trying very hard to sell something, I wouldn't lie about it. Uh, this is the Achilles heel for me. Um, I was raised by a pathological liar. I think I've talked about this in the past. And I struggled with pathological lying when I was a kid. Pathological lying is effectively a morbid condition. It will destroy your life. And I had to work very hard not to lie. I had to learn to stop giving in to my desires. And when, when you, for those of you who don't know what a pathological liar is, pathological liar is someone who really doesn't know the truth because they basically they basically create it as they go along. So a lot of times a pathological liar will be telling you something that is that is absolutely absolutely fake, but they believe it to be true, and that can be really hard. Obviously, when you're trying to explain to them why they're completely full of shit. It's, it's different than a person who knows the truth and then intentionally lies. A pathological liar can convince themselves of the truth of their lies, which is the most insidious form of lying. And so because I have struggled with that in the past, it's kind of like I have to like abstain from lying. It's not that I don't do it, and I certainly do it professionally occasionally, but it's pretty rare because uh, me telling white lies will very rapidly turn into more sinister lies, will very rapidly lead back to pathological lying, and then I'm completely out of control. So this is one of those outlier situations where I have enough self-awareness self, um, that I probably don't fit the normal sociopathic trend. So even if I were trying very hard to sell something, I wouldn't lie about it. I'm going to have to go with somewhat agree on that. Cheating is not justified because it is unfair to others. Absolutely disagree. There is no such thing as cheating uh, outside the confines of, like, for example, a marriage. And even then, there are conditions. There are definitely things that my wife could do that I would then feel justified in cheating on her. Uh, I probably wouldn't because I would just get out of the marriage. But I, but even if I didn't do it, I would still feel justified to do it. So cheating is quite often justified, and it is never not justified just because it is unfair to others. I do not give a damn about fairness. In fact, I try to create the most unfair conditions around me at all times. That's how you succeed in life. If you can stack the cards in your favor and stack them against your opponent, then you have a better chance of success. So creating unfair situations is actually a survival strategy. It is a way to succeed in the world. One of the things that you will understand is that, that so before, we're about to get, um, let me go ahead and submit it so it doesn't time out. Um, uh, have you ever answered, have, were your answers accurate and can they be used for research? Yes. Would you be willing to answer a few more questions for our research before you view your results? No. Um, oh boy. Um, okay, so before we get to the answers, um, what was I saying? Um, see, I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm saying. I should, I should have finished my thought. Before I jumped over this, because now, now I have been, I have been uh, taken off my, my rap. So, you've been sitting here for 40 and a half minutes. Um, you've heard all of my dissertation on why I feel the way I feel. I think I've probably covered it, uh, the same things, multiple, multiple times from multiple angles. Here are the results. You have completed the Levinson Self-Report Psychopathy Scale. 
The LSRP measures two scales. Scores range from one uh, low to five high. Your score from primary psychopathy has been calculated as 4.6. Primary, psych primary psychopathy is the effective aspects of, psych psycho uh, of psychopathy, a lack of empathy for other people and tolerance for antisocial orientations. Your second score from secondary psychopathy has been calculated as a 3.8. Secondary psychopathy is the antisocial aspect of psychopathy, rule breaking and lack of effort towards socially rewarded behavior. Wow, I'm surprised I didn't get a five on both of these, but fair enough. With two scores, with two scores, results of the LSRP are very suitable for being plotted. Below is the distribution of how other people who have taken this test have scored. And so it's got some graph that, um, uh, so basically the, the, the overwhelming majority of people are not psychopathic. They fall like, they, if you've got a graph like this, they fall like right here. Uh, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a link to this test so that hopefully others of you in the in the audience will take it and report back on your scores. So your score for primary psychopathy was higher than 95.74% of people who've taken this test. <laughs> your score for secondary psychopathy was higher than 92.14% of people who've taken this test. So I have to be honest, these numbers are actually somewhat terrifying to me because what this says to me, this is what I'm gleaning from this and this is probably indicative of the state of my brain. When I see that I, I, I have, I have uh, my primary psychopathy is, 95, is higher than 95% of people who've taken this test, all I can think about is holy shit, where are the other 5% who are crazier than me? Because those are the people I need to be watching out for. This tells me I am not the most psychopathic person walking the streets. Which means that there is somebody out there who can out-psychopath me. Which means they could potentially manipulate me, uh, beat me, beat me in certain things that I might care about. They have, I view psychopathy as, as, as basically a superpower. Uh, I believe that psychopathy is effectively the answer to building a truly productive um, uh, uh, a future for America. Uh, I, all major world leader, leaders are going to score very high on psychopathy. So, to, to, to my, in my view, you've got predators and prey is basically where the way it breaks down. And the more you tend towards psychopathy, the more you are, the more predatory you are, and the less psychopathic you are, the more. Uh, of a prey animal you are and so in my estimation there is no there's no debate here predators defeat prey 100% of the time the only thing that is left to determine is who of the predators is the actual alpha predator and for my 95.74% score I might not be the one uh, but again this is this is obviously tainted to some degree because I'm not your average I don't think your average like really died in the wool sociopath. So your really died in the wool sociopath is likely not going to have a wife, not going to have children, not going to have some of the things that cause me to answer lower on this test. You know, one of the answers that I, I checked a, a little below agree was do I put other people's, oh, I think it was, there was a couple that I, 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 I came down the list basically because of the effect that my wife and children have on me. So if I was completely out there in the wild, nomad, you know, solo alpha, it's possible that uh, all, some of these would have been pegged out. The other factor that I suspect, it, uh, it, you know, in my mind negatively affected the test is that I'm not purely money driven, which uh, I don't know why that's a marker of psychopathy. I can't know what, what changed, you know, why I'm at 94 instead of 100. I was really going for 100. <laughs> But I wasn't going to lie. That's the thing. I'm not going to lie. I could have easily gained the test. So one of the things that, that I have done uh, numerous times, I did this to my previous employer. They gave, uh, they made us do this personality test to determine whether the sales career was right for you. And so the first time I took it, I gained it. And I answered all of the questions in the way that I felt would give me the highest score in saying that you are the best salesman in the company.
And I took the test and I, I, I succeeded in gaming it and I came out in all of the markers that my boss was looking for. You know, I, I pegged out max on all those markers. And then a few years later when I was in a very different mental state, he made us take this thing again. And this was like a lengthy test. This was not like this. I, I, I could have done this in a minute or two. It took me a long time because I was talking through all the answers. But this was like a lengthy battery of tests. I think it took 45 minutes to complete this. And so I'm having to complete it in my personal time. I was going through some shit. I was really irritated. And I told my, I was working for my dad at the time. But the owner of the company was uh, making me take this test. And I told my dad, I was like, you know, I'm fucking sick of this shit. I'm going to answer this test as truthfully as possible. And when I took it the second time and didn't try to game it, because I'm so antisocial, uh, and because some, some very, it scored me very low. It was like, no, like you would be way better off in like industrial engineering or like product control or something like that. It was nothing to do with, with like being a salesman and interacting with people and being driven to meet goals and shit like that. Like there's really no part of, of, of that in me. The only reason I succeed in a sales position is because I usually find ways to get other people to do parts of my job for me that I don't like to do. The current company that I work for, uh, I basically don't have to do any paperwork, uh, which is which is what catches me up. I am terrible at paperwork. I just want to be manipulating other people vis-a-vis -vis selling. Uh, some people call it selling, I call it manipulating. I want to be out on the road, on the phone, in the email, closing deals. All of the background administrative tasks, I have no interest in that. I can't keep up with it. I, I, I destroy it. And so luckily I'm in an environment where I don't have to do any of that because there's several people that they have uh, in the mix who, who do the majority of that stuff. So I can be free to master manipulate on a regular basis. And thus far, I've been very successful at doing it. So there you have it. Um, I, like I said, I've taken this test before. I've taken a lot of these kind of self-assessment batteries. Um, I, every time I answer the questions, I just can't imagine somebody answering them any differently. So I would love in, in, in the comments some feedback. You know, did you t take the test? What is your score? Uh, if somebody would like to make a response video arguing how they feel totally different and why they care about other people's feelings or why they would have answered differently than, than, you know, I can't remember all the questions now, but if somebody wants to make a counter view video, I would love to see that because um, I really just cannot emphasize enough how completely disconnected I am with, with even the possibility of somebody feeling differently. It's like, it's just, I just cannot fathom how or why other people care so much about the uh, about other people I, I just i cannot get there mentally and so i would love for somebody maybe to um illustrate that for me in a way that maybe i, I my sociopathic brain can digest but there you have it hopefully this has been entertaining and informative um it is honest i know it's ugly to a lot of you but it is the truth uh for better or worse and that's what i always try to bring on this channel so there you have it as always thank you for watching we'll see you on the next one